today's episode of the Van Build Series, we're going to talk plumbing. In our plumbing system, we've got an electric hot water heater, a 20 gallon in van water tank, a electric water pump with a diaphragm and an automatic shutoff, and then we have a shower and a sink and a 7 gallon under van gray water tank for each one of those. We started out by mounting pretty much everything that you see here behind me in the van for our water system. Once we knew where all the components were going to go, we got all the fittings that we needed and assembled them and put them together. And then we took PEX hosing and ran the PEX throughout the van. Now we chose PEX because one, it's real easy to work with. You just cut off what you need, crimp the connectors together, and you keep on moving to the next one. Another reason that we chose it is because of its resistance to freezing or the fact that it can freeze and will not burst. So after we ran all that through the van, we hooked up the shower mixing valve, the sink mixing valve, and the dog wash mixing valve. And from there, we installed all of the drain lines that run to our gray water tanks, which are mounted underneath the van. All right, guys, it's time to break it down and get into the details here. So we're starting out by mounting our two main components, which is our 20 gallon water tank, which you see in the left of the van, and our Bosch 4.5 gallon hot water heater. Uh, basically, it's made to mount underneath the sink in a normal kitchen, so it's got a little plate with two little prongs, and it basically just hangs on them. So we're adding a little bit of extra support to our back wall there, so we can mount the plate on it. And once that's on there, we're going to go ahead and put the little plate with the two prongs on, and we're going to set that hot water heater on there. So basically, what I'm trying to do is get the main components mounted so I'll know where some of the smaller stuff can go and where the hose routing needs to, to go to work out. And the reason we went with an electric hot water heater over a propane hot water heater is the fact that when you have a tank on your water heater, you know the water is hot and you don't have to wait for it to flow through the unit and then get hot. So there's a lot less uh, waiting involved and wasting water, basically. So we were trying to be proactive and not waste any water in the van. So the next biggest components that we mounted in our system are the two 7-gallon tanks that go underneath our van. And we'll put a link to all this stuff below in the description if you want to get the exact tanks we used. Uh, these were all, all from Amazon, so they're easy to get. Basically, they fit perfectly between the outside of the van and the frame rail. So it's a, it's a pretty tight fit, but they slide in there pretty snug. Uh, what we're doing now is test fitting them and figuring out where all the fittings need to go. So we backed the, the van up on some blocks there and slid under it and we're putting everything together. So basically the tanks come with four holes in them, one inch and a half MPT hole and three half inch MPT holes. And for the inch and a half one, we're going to put a big straight fitting in it and run inch and a half hose into it to be our drain for our shower. And then the one on the other side will be the drain for the sink. And now the reason that we chose to use such a big hose diameter is so that we would prevent clogging. Uh, we didn't want to have real tiny hose running down the drain and it clog up every, uh, every day when we try to use the, the shower or the sink, basically. Then on the other two uh, drain or uh, fittings in the tank, one is our drain fitting and the other is our vent fitting that's in the top of the tank. And the hole that you see us using the hole saw to put in the tank here is for our level sender, which we've also got a link below to that as well if you want to use the same level sender and gauge set that we use. So we always know how much water's in our tanks, if we're getting close to full, if we need to fill up, that kind of thing. Uh, basically, it's a sending unit that's used for marine fuel tanks, and so it's made to mount in an aluminum or a stainless steel gas tank. So basically, we just drilled and tapped the whole pattern into the plastic and put a little sealant on it when we put it all together. And so far, we haven't had any issues with that at all. Uh, everything's worked out pretty great on it. It's just a simple two-wire transducer. You can see we're screwing it in there. It's got a little float on it that floats up and down in the tank. And getting everything finalized to go under the van here. We've got to extend the wiring to get it up into the van, obviously, and make it where it'll run into our control panel, which we'll get to in our electrical video, which should be coming out in two weeks. So if you want to see the ins and outs of all of our electrical wiring, 
make sure you uh, check back with the channel in a couple weeks and that video will be live. There's also other videos we have on other electrical stuff like other components we use and things of that nature so if you're interested in that make sure you check out those videos as well. So getting all these wires crimped on here um, basically we're we only put a sending unit in one side because the two tanks are tied together so really we'll know the level of both tanks at all times and it actually worked out where that plan kind of didn't work how I wanted it to so the drive shaft kind of messed us up where we didn't want to have a hose dangling below the drive shaft of the van to cross over to the other side and this was uh, the reason that it didn't quite work because the levels weren't quite the same so that's you can see is the finished deal with the vent the drain and the uh, sink drain in it and we'll get a, we'll get back to that uh, little error that I mentioned uh, later so underneath the van we didn't want the t metal tanks to be sandwiched up against the metal on the bottom of the van because there was some sharp edges and things we were worried about where the metal might would uh, poke through the tanks so we took some uh, 4x4 pressure treated lumber and made little holders that basically cradle the tank instead of it sitting on the metal. It will uh, sandwich the little holders in, the, in between the metal and the tank and basically be like a wood cushion that the tank sits on. So we used a table saw and cut those little pieces and assembled them. And so these are what the pieces look like up inside the van. And you can see there's a little notch cut out for that piece of metal that comes down out of the body. That's what we were worried about stabbing through the van or stabbing through the, the tank. So we got the three blocks in there and we're getting ready to raise the tank up into place, putting the vent line on there because once you install this, it's actually really difficult to get into that um, area right there and see what's going on. So I went ahead and put the vent line on before. Another thing uh, with the vents is make sure you don't run the vent hose out of the tank and then down and then back up because what will happen is water will get in the little loop in the bottom and then your tank won't vent and then your shower backs up or your sink backs up and it's really frustrating. I ended up just cutting the, the vent hoses off to where they're pretty short and if we ever run into an issue where we don't have enough room in the tank the tanks will overflow out of the vent wherever we're at, which is not really that desirable, but that's kind of a mistake that we had to live with in our van. So when you're doing your plumbing, <clears throat> make sure you keep up where with where the low point is in each of your hoses. If you're trying to do a vent, there can't be any low points. It either needs to all drain back to the tank or be short enough where it all drains out of the drain hose. So don't make the same mistake that we made there. So in order to get the tanks under the van, they fit up in that little hole very nicely and we ended up using uh, it's duct hanging wire and basically it's just a little strip of wire that's got a bunch of holes in it so you can screw it into the van with sheet metal screws and then wrap it around the bottom of the tank and screw it up to the other side with sheet metal screws and you can kind of see them there they're sticking out from under the van and another thing that we did is used little rubber guides that will keep the uh, metal strips from kind of digging into the tank so we'll put a link to, to all that in the description below if you want to use the exact duct hanging material and the exact met, or, uh, rubber sh isolator strips that we used. They fit perfectly on the little duct hangers and sandwiched up in between the tanks pretty nicely. I was actually really, really happy with how all that turned out. This is a step where it's really helpful to have two people because basically I was underneath holding the tank and I would stretch one of the metal straps up and then my dad, he would... Uh, help out by taking the drill and pre-drilling the hole and then running the sheet metal screw in while I was holding everything. So big shout out to my dad for helping out with all of the plumbing stuff. I think he probably did just as much of the plumbing as I did in the end. Uh, definitely couldn't have done it without him. So you can see we're getting the, the third strap up on this one and then the vent line's kind of hanging out by itself and our wire is kind of hanging off to the side for the sending unit. And another thing about this tank is this is the drain this is the tank for the shower and it also has an automatic ball valve on it so we had to add that in after the tank was already installed and run the wire with the sending unit wire over to the other side so now we're kind of repeating the process on this side of the van for the uh, sink so 
If you are familiar with the layout of our van, basically the shower is on the driver's side, the sink's on the passenger side, and we had to have a drain for each. Initially, I didn't want to put two tanks underneath the van, but I was kind of forced. I mean, I spent probably an hour laying under the van with a tape measure and my phone, uh, looking at every single gray water tank on Amazon and measuring every opening under the van and thinking if I could run hose this way and that way. And ultimately what it came to is that I would have to mount the tank at the very back of the van and there'd have to be a lot of hosing that went either over or under the axle or the drive shaft or just it was going to be a nightmare to try to do a single tank and so that's why I just finally settled with going with the two tanks on either side and they're both seven gallons so that gives us about 14 gallons of gray water storage and our freshwater tanks only 20 gallons so I mean we haven't really run in we've only backed up the sink I think one time and that's just because we're uh, kind of rookies at it and we're using a lot of water to wash dishes but since we've kind of zeroed in on how we can wash dishes more efficiently and we try to find uh, dump stations more regularly and keep an eye on our tank levels through our level indicators a little bit better. Um, so you can see here we're going through drilling some, some holes and then running the hangers in and this side definitely went a lot faster than the other side. Um, we've also got our vent hose hanging out underneath. We kind of tie that up and get everything nice and tidy underneath the van and we go ahead and try to get our crossover line like where we where we want it a little bit but what we realize is that in order to cross over from tank to tank and make it where the single level indicator will read both that uh, you really can't do that because it has to go up and over the drive shaft so it makes it where one tank fills up and then after a certain point it will fill the other tank up so it's not totally disconnected, but it doesn't really work how I wanted it to. So going through here, getting all of the brass fittings put together. Uh, one thing you'll see, they've got rolls of Teflon tape there. On the first go-round, we put everything together with Teflon tape. And uh, on the second go-round, we took everything apart and put it back together with pipe dope. So don't be us and put everything together with Teflon tape and do it again. Uh, go ahead and just skip the Teflon tape throw that stuff in the garbage, never buy it again, and buy pipe dope and use pipe dope because <laughs> it will save you a lot of time because the first time we pressurized the system uh, we realized that we had a lot of leaks and the level of frustration was quite high I will say. <laughs> so we got all of the main components put together there for the first time and then now we're getting our accumulator and our water pump installed. Both of those links will be below this will be uh, probably the video with the most links because I think every part of this plumbing system came from Amazon. I really can't think of anything that didn't actually. <laughs> so the, um, basically just mounting those over to the side over there and using some hosing to go out of the tank and through the pump and through the accumulator. And basically this is like the, the beginning of the flow path. So it goes from tank to pump to accumulator and then from the accumulator, there is a um, valve, a hand valve, and then a check valve, and then the T for the city water connection. Then you can see our water filter housing there. And then it goes from the water filter up and over and into the hot water heater to give us both hot and cold water at that point. And one thing you'll notice is a lot of people will put this water filter right at their sink and only have like a separate tap for filtered water. But this water filter, it's designed to basically run in, on a house for a long period of time. So for me personally, I figured why not just filter every bit of water going through the tank and make it a little bit easier and um, basically know that all of our water is filtered and clean and that we don't really have to worry about it clogging up in the uh, hot water heater or anything of that nature. So now we're getting started with the PEX and this is the first time that I had ever used PEX and I quickly learned how easy it is to just cut and cut and go with this stuff basically. It crimps together really quick with uh, the fittings and it's uh, it's really easy to use. I ordered a whole entire kit off of Amazon that came with the crimper, the cutter, and I think 100 feet of the hot and cold half-inch pecs. And we chose to use half-inch lime because 
vans are small in nature and therefore the runs of the water lines are really relatively small or not as long and that means that the friction losses of the water moving through the pipes is going to be less so you can use pretty much the smallest diameter which is commercially available which is half inch and you still have plenty of water pressure at the shower and the sink um, so you can see here the, the PEX tubing it's actually pretty flexible you can turn it and bend it and kind of work it through a lot of different places and in a lot of different ways and end up with a routing that's the most efficient. So basically what we're doing is taking it down the side of the van that doesn't have any of the electrical components. We tried to keep all of our electricity separate from all of our water and we're pretty much able to do this. There's really only one place in the van where the two kind of intermingle a little bit and that's where we go into the side of the kitchen cabinet. So basically what we're working on now is getting the T in place where one line will go to our shower and the other line will cut across the front of the dog area and go over into our kitchen cabinets. And so now we're getting a place in the uh, sink area cut out to basically allow the plumbing to come up through. And this is something when I made the kitchen cabinets, I wish that I had... Um, done this basically before now because this added a lot of time of running the router and this little jig that I made to cut out a little hole that was actually smaller than what it needed to be to get all the piping in there. Uh, I kind of just dealt with it and worked through it though but ideally I would have made a bigger opening underneath the back of the sink in order to allow all the pecs to come up through and really what uh, what made the spacing a little tight right here is the fact that I had a mixing valve installed for the dog wash area as well and that was a lot of 90s and T's and uh, a lot of pecs joints that had to be added into this small little space along with all of the hoses that had to run to the sink faucet and the little telescoping sink faucet uh, Deal, like the sprayer that comes out of the sink all that line goes in there as well so made that little jig ran the router around got a perfectly square opening there that allowed us to have a, a little bit of space to do what all I was just talking about and so now I'm taking the paddle bit there and making a hole big enough to allow the uh, dog wash spigot to go mount underneath the cabinet and it turns out the hole that I drilled was slightly too small and so I had to go back in there with the router and open it up a little bit and try to get it to where the uh, spigot would fit in there. But that's actually been a, a really nice feature on the van. There's been a couple times when the dogs have been super, super dirty and we've been really thankful that we've been able to spray them off outside of the van and get them cleaned off before coming inside. So now I'm working on running the PEX that goes to our shower. And basically there's one hot line and one cold line that goes into our shower opening here. And when I first plumbed up the valve, I actually plumbed it up backwards. The hot and cold should be switched here. I didn't learn that until later on when I had to put the handle on the valve and I was reading through the instructions and it said that the uh, hot should be on the left and the cold should be on the right. So I had to rip out all of this PEX and flip it around because I didn't want the colors to be wrong. That's something, uh, in hindsight it probably wouldn't have mattered if the colors were wrong inside the wall because you can't really see them but for me personally I just wanted all the colors to be right because it really bothered me when I knew that it would be wrong and if I ever had to go back and work on it later uh, if I ever ripped the wall out and needed to change something on the mixing valve I would have confused myself probably so basically I'm I'm fitting all of the the 90s and such together in the cabinet and then crimping them together you can see it's it's a long way back in the cabinet so i'm kind of trying to put together as much as i can uh, before i put it in there and this is one thing i probably could have uh, run a little bit of this before i put the face frames on the cabinet and it would have been a lot easier to get in the cabinet cases because the face frames just make everything a little bit smaller but i was able to get it plumbed up and it, it wasn't too bad the, like I said earlier, the PEX is, uh, is pretty friendly to work with. So now we're going to bring it across the, the front of the dog box like I was talking about earlier. And this is basically where it tees off for the uh, shower and for the sink. So pretty much you can see how the PEX comes there. It's in really big rolls. 
So I would just kind of measure roughly what I needed, add two feet to it, because I knew I had way more pecs than I needed. Um, and so I wasn't too concerned about having a little bit of waste here. So I just ran all of the pecs lines, left them long, and then trimmed them down to fit basically it at the end when I was ready to connect them all. And that little corner right there, that's the corner that I was talking about earlier when I said there's really only one place where there's a water joint along with electrical, and that's right there. But fortunately for us, that water joint did not leak at all, and all the crimps held, so everything was good there. We didn't, don't have to worry about any water in our electrical. So fortunately, the, the PEX hosing is, has done really well for us. It's been about, uh, let's say, 7,000 miles now, and we haven't had a, a single leak. So we're getting all of the pecs for the mixing valve and the sink done here. I'm basically laying it all out. And what I ended up doing is cutting a bunch of the smallest pieces possible between the joints. And this allowed me to just kind of fit everything together. Another good thing about the pecs is it's all able to be taken apart before you crimp it. So I kind of dry fitted everything and then came back and crimped it all. So you can see I'm sticking it all together here, cutting all the little pieces and getting everything just how I want it, making sure that the valves all work. And then basically at the end, we'll start crimping it all together. But I knew that everything was gonna fit before I was past the point of no return. And I mean, it's that, this was a lot of little joints in here to, to achieve the uh, mixing valves for the dog sprayer and the sink connections at the same time and they all had to fit inside this little tiny opening that I just cut out with the router and I was still kinda mad at myself for not thinking through this a little bit more and I, I wish I had made a bigger opening there underneath the, the sink but it ended up working out pretty nice um, and I was able to squeeze all of the plumbing in for the sink through that hole as well. So there's what the finished product looks like with all the, the hot and cold uh, opening for the sink and then the mixing valve that goes to the dog sprayer underneath there. So now it's time to get the hole saw out and drill a pretty good size hole through the bottom of the van that allowed us to run our plumbing and our hosing out. And basically I just put a PVC sleeve in and ran our softwall rubber hose through the PVC sleeve. And we're checking underneath the van, making sure that we're going to go through the bottom of the van in the right place, taking some careful measurements, trying to get a way to uh, align the hole through the bottom of the van. So fortunately our measurements were correct and we ended up right where we wanted to be on the underside of the van after we drilled the hole through the cabinet, the spray foam, the floor joist, and the uh, floor of the van. So this is what our plumbing ended up looking like. We've got our RVP trap and we actually uh, changed out that metal sleeve you see there with the hose that's in this shot. Reason being is when there's any type of sideways pressure put on that metal sleeve, which it's not designed to have, it leaks really bad. So we just ram the uh, soft wall rubber hose up on the pipe threads there, put in a bunch of silicone and two hose clamps on each end and let it dry. And we basically siliconed almost every joint in that assembly to make it not want to uh, leak when it was put under pressure because the hose was going through the bottom of the van and putting a little bit of torque on it. So here we're running the wiring for our water pumps and there's also another float sensor that's in our rear tank right there. You can kind of see it on top of the tank underneath the water pumps and that uh, signal wire is also being run in this conduit as well. So that's all the, the wire that you see in the conduit and I'm just cutting that, getting it right where it needs to be, the right lengthwise, and pulling that mess of uh, wire through there and getting it all out of the way. And basically, we'll terminate the uh, pump wiring on our uh, fuse block from Blue Sea, but we'll get into all the wiring a little more in detail on the uh, next video, which is all of the wiring and how we installed all of our wiring. So if you're interested in that, check back with us in two weeks and that video will be up. So that pretty much does it for the bulk of the wiring. There's also a P-trap underneath our shower, which I didn't film the installation of that, uh, unfortunately, because we were under the van and a little bit in a time crunch at this point. But 
I am gonna stick the camera under the van here and go a little more in detail of the actual components that are underneath the van so you can kind of get a better look at how we drain the tanks and how all the plumbing underneath works. So this is our gray water tank that's underneath our kitchen sink. The big hose that runs down is the drain from the sink and then the wire also goes through that hole in order to actuate our drain valve and our level sensor on the other side. On this side we can hook up a raw water dump hose and that's basically to a spigot that you have there with the red handle. The T is the hose that connects this tank to the other tank that's on the other side of the van. The tank's held on with uh, duct hanger material and there's three of those that hold it up into the bottom of the van. On the other side we've got a very similar setup. We've got our inch and a half drain hose that comes from our shower and runs into the tank. But on this side we have an automatic dump valve that we can actuate from our control panel inside the van. This tank's in the same exact location on the other side of the van as it is for the sink and it's also held with three duct hanger straps.